Hello YouTube, Oliver G here from the Earful Tower. What you're about to hear is an episode from the back catalogue of my podcast, but what you're about to see is exactly what we were talking about. This YouTube miniseries is about beautiful Paris walks, and in this case, we'll take you along Rue des Abbes. Lena. Hey. How are you doing? I'm great, thank you. Uh, I was going to say welcome to the studio. We're not in the studio. <laughs> We're staying on Place des Abbes. Yes, we which, are. Which is uh, kind of shockingly beautiful in its own right. It is. Wow, yeah, shockingly beautiful. Mm. Why not? Mm. <laughs> We're standing right by uh, the old metro station entrance, which is one of the Art Nouveau beautiful, beautiful old school ones. Yeah. Which I understand. Shockingly stunning. Yeah. <laughs> I understand they transported all the way up from Hotel de Ville long, long ago. Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't know that. But that's, that's why, yeah, it's a really old school one. And for the poor yeah. people who take the metro, the poor people. The poor people. <laughs> By poor, I'm not talking about monetary. Uh, hey, I'm walking here. I mean, uh, the people unfortunate enough to take the metro to this exact stop, you have to go up hundreds and hundreds of steps because it's the deepest metro entrance. It is deep, but thank God there's an elevator. Yes. So you're not completely screwed. Can I say screwed? Yeah, you can say screwed. I said screwed. Uh, what I was going to say, though, is we're going to do a walk from this end yeah. to the other end where there's a little sort of treat uh, awaiting anyone who mm. does a similar walk. But uh, just a quick thought from you before we begin. Yep. Uh, I believe this is also your favorite street in Paris. It is. I think it's the best one. Why? Because it is... Well, I'm a little bit lazy. It's relatively flat, for one. <laughs> right. It's really picturesque. It's got all these like small shops and cafes. It's got different sizes houses. It's not just the house manian, which are beautiful in their own right. But That's right. Houseman's not listening. You, can't, you won't offend <laughs> <laughs> no, I just think it's great. It's got a little bit of everything, and it's just so charming. And on this for me, this is Paris. On this particular walk, is there anything you're looking forward to uh, pointing out? Well, maybe something a little bit tasty. Okay, I in think the I know. middle of the walk. I, I think I know maybe where you're if going I'm lucky. With that one. And uh, before that scooter runs us over, let's get on with the walk. All right. So as we're walking, Lena, and I notice as you're filming... I am. Uh, <laughs> this which... is for the, for the lucky people at home with a screen. <laughs> so as we're walking, we're passing the, uh, the small park with the I love you wall. What is your thought of that? Uh, I, I think it's really cute. I mean, it's, it's a little bit of a tourist trap. It's not, I mean, it doesn't really do much. It's just a wall with, that says I love you in all the different languages. So there's that. But it's a good photo op. It's a good photo op. I think it's fun the first it's time. It's fun. It's cute. The first time. It's a one-off thing. The first time, thing. yeah. And then uh, you don't really need to sit. Yeah. Although the other day I was sitting, I went in there beyond the I love you wall just to sit on a park bench. Very quiet. Beautiful. That's nice. That's um, a good idea, actually. But what I thought I'd say, you might be able to hear it, guys, as we're walking is we're going to pass a lot of uh, terraces in the evening. So we're recording this at Sunday Sunday evening. It's yeah, about, sunset. What is it, about 9 o'clock now? Something like that, yeah. 9 o'clock on a summer's day. There's a lot of activity on this street in the evening as well as in the day. So in the day, you'll be seeing bakeries, you'll be seeing the butchers, the fish markets, all that kind of... Yeah, the hustle and bustle, the daily the daily life kind of thing. Right. In the evening, that's when, yeah, when you when you take a little, have a little afro, just... So what's an apéro? An apéro is like a, it's like a, a beverage that you have after work. And it's a it's so like it's short for apéritif, and the yeah. French people love to say apéro. Apéro. Let's meet for an apéro, and that's what a lot of people are doing even here on a Sunday. Yes. But uh, it's excellent for people watching. Maybe the best in the city. I think so. I think it's just it's really charming. And one thing that I, I would stress to people: if you're walking as we're walking now, which is from west to east. For sure, to keep an eye on your right-hand side at all the roads that go up. Hey, I'd even say go up them because where we're passing now, which is Rue Ravignon, has a particular set of intriguing history to itself. For example, if you are listening to this as you're walking along in the street, which maybe someone will be doing, yeah. you can look up that street and you'll see all the trees if you're in the summer or you'll see... Yeah, uh, it's like a green, big green bush. Yeah, it looks beautiful right now. Don't know what it looks like in winter. That's the sound of an electric trottinette uh, scooter going past. But if you go up there, that's where Picasso's studio is, up yeah, amongst the, the foliage. Exactly right. So this place is just crawling, crawling, crawling with history. Yeah. Uh, but we're not going to go up this street. We're not going to go up Rue Ravignon. We're going to stop and look on the left at Le Vrai Paris, which might be the most Instagrammable restaurant in I the whole city. I think so. It's, I mean, it is, they've done it well. They and, really have. I mean, I'm, I'm guilty of Instagramming it for once or twice. <laughs> 
Didn't you draw it fairly recently? I did. I did a little funny, you know, just funny, cutesy drawing of it. So a shout out to, to Lena's drawings at Parisian Postcards. Get a glimpse of her little <laughs> well, postcards of much. well, get a glimpse of her postcards of the city and uh, that restaurant. They shared your picture, didn't you? They did. Yeah, that's they cool. did. Uh, it's a. I mean, what's so beautiful about it is that they have these so many branches of um, pink cherry blossom. I don't think it's real. I don't think they shipped them it in all be pink, pink, year pink round, blossom. but it just looks stunning. Okay. Well, least. we're going to continue. So what I'm going to do is. Uh, try and capture the the ambiance of a french terrace on a sunday night let's see what it sounds like so lena just a quick question i'll stop you here do you know why it's called a rue des abbesses no well neither did i which made for a particularly uncomfortable moment in a tour i gave fairly recently when oh, someone really? asked me no well yeah <laughs> But uh, turns out even more embarrassingly is it's the same word in English. Oh. Abes. Well, shame on you. Shame on me. Yes. Uh, but Abes is the mother nun. You know the one who... Uh, have you seen Sound of Music? Of course. Yeah. So you know in the opening scene when Maria runs back late and she's been frolicking in the mountains? <laughs> yeah. And then, of course. then there's the mother nun who yeah. sings, uh, you know, quite a, uh, a beautiful voice. It is. Uh, it is quite beautiful, oh, isn't it? Oh, 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 oh. She's an abbess, <laughs> a mother abbess. Oh, mother abbess, <laughs> mother abbess. <laughs> so so uh, the street isn't named after her, but it's named... The whole area of Montmartre was full of monastery. Well, one particular monastery. Yeah. Uh, and even to this day, you still see nuns walking around. And it's this, true. And this street is named after them. But uh, the reason I stopped you here wasn't because of uh, because I wanted to serenade you. No, it's another holy grail. <laughs> that's, that's right. We're out the front of Amarino uh, Gelato al Naturale. Maybe once again the most Instagrammable ice cream in the city. Absolutely beautiful. They are shaped. They shape them like like the, the cones. They shape them like flowers. Exactly. It's amazing. So we're going to go in and we're going to get one of them. They are beautiful. They're not sponsoring the show. I just think they're good at all. I wish. <laughs> yeah, let's get in there. Deux cornets, s'il vous plaît. Deux cornets petits ou grands Juste petits, s'il vous plaît. Il okay. y aura un macaron par dessus Pas de macaron. Okay. Je suis sur un régime. Okay. Deux petits cornets, donc ça vous fait 7,40. Ok, merci, je vais par carte. Ah. I don't know if everyone heard the laughter. <laughs> merci. <laughs> Alright, now we walk over. Tickets. Tickets. Now we listen to Lena ordering first. Moi, moi je prends une mixte et les s'il vous plaît. Juste une grande mix. Moi, moi, je, euh, moi je prends fruits de la passion, citron vert euh, et mangue, s'il vous plaît. Ça marche Très bon choix. Très bon choix. Merci. Wow Bonne dégustation. Bonne soirée. Merci. So standing here with ice creams in in hand, uh, melting quicker than a quicker than a polar <laughs> ice cap. Too soon, too soon. Uh, but we're standing at the front of another point of interest, La Cave des Abbes. It's a uh, a wine cellar with a hidden restaurant out the back. Yeah, it looks humble, humble with, enough. Yeah, out the front there's out just the front. six or seven seats. But if you go all the way to the back, there's a nice little restaurant, cheap food. And they have amazing planches, which is like a plate of. Yeah, an assortment of cheeses and, and charcuteries. And not to mention very good wine. So check yes. that one out as well, everybody. So we walked a little bit further now. For those playing at home, you know the walk shows I do for Patreon supporters? Yeah. Often there's some people, John D. Murray, I'm looking at you especially. <laughs> Even you recognize that name, huh? Of course. He loves to follow along on Google Street View. So mm. I figured anyone playing at home right now, we're walking past Rue Audran. A-U-D-R-A-N. Audran, maybe? Audran? Yeah, who knows? Yeah, I'd probably say it like that. Well, a proper name. Who knows? Proper who knows? Name. But I wanted to say a little language tip. This episode is brought to you by French Day after all. Mm -hmm. uh, don't forget that little discount. Uh, Frenchday.com slash earful8. But what I wanted to say is a little language tip that I do very often. You're probably sick of it by now. <laughs> but as I make a light little stupid joke, like I did just then when we were ordering the ice creams. Mm. And let me just break it down for everyone. 
I said, je suis sur un régime, which means I'm on a diet, because they just offered me a macaron. And you're a slim fella. I'm a pretty slim fella. I didn't want the <laughs> macaron. I didn't want to just say no. I wanted to take the opportunity to have a little bit of a small talk conversation with them. It's like a mini lesson as exactly, well. Exactly, exactly. So I said, no thank you, I'm on a diet. And they roared, roared with laughter uh, I mean, for minutes on yeah, air. Yeah, okay, uh, let's gonna, go with that. I'm going to go in and yeah, edit it to okay. be a bit louder. But <laughs> the whole point of that is, uh, and I recommend anyone to do it, I'm sure Camille would agree, if you have a few little phrases like that, icebreakers, nice breaker. then get to nice it. Ice cream breaker. And I'll give you guys <laughs> another one that I use all the time. Uh, to put into perspective or to okay. paint the picture, I was in a bar the other day, I was ordering a drink, the bartender put a little slice of lemon yeah. into the top of the, the neck of the beer. And I said to him, que la fête commence, which means <laughs> let that party begin. And, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> and Lena's heard it so many times now. But <laughs> the bartender, this is true, he laughed uproariously. Yeah, he was very polite. And then the point of me, <laughs> the point of me doing it was to break the ice. It let him know that I was a foreigner, that I wanted to have a little conversation, that I was uh, good for it's a laugh. It's true. I mean, it's actually the perfect... It's the perfect icebreaker. It's a perfect sentence to say, "Hey, I'm not from here, but I, I, I'm just a fun, fun, fun guy." So try that one. You've, I've heard you say it before. I have. Que la fête commence. Yeah, I'm on the train. I don't know. By the way, I don't know I'm if on any. The train. I'm on the <laughs> what? You, do, you say it when you're buying a metro ticket. <laughs> but I've seen. I don't know if French people say it. I asked my good friend Fabien to translate that exact same sentence. You mean sentence. the Breton sailor? Yeah, the Breton sailor. Yeah. I asked him about four years ago how to say "let the party begin." Uh, and that has been one of and my... And it has stuck. The party hasn't stopped. <laughs> so we're passing now by Rue Toulouse. T-H-O-L-O-Z-E. That's Z-E for any Americans listening. Z-E. And uh, if you go uphill, you, you can see a windmill on, on the further up the hill. Yeah. It's also where Lost in there Frenchlation... There are a few around. There are, yeah, there are a number Around this here. area, actually. There's, in fact, the Moulin Rouge is at the bottom of this hill. Yeah. On the left, if you look up, so at the bottom of this street, there's a huge invader, space invader. But I've done a whole episode about that, so the less they said... So they're like mosaics, street art. But one thing I wanted to talk about, we've been going past all these uh, restaurants, these terraces. Yeah. I think a lot of people might find it hard to decide which one to go to. But you and I have maybe been to... Full disclosure, we live just around the corner. Yeah, we're very close. Yeah, but we've been to many of these terraces, mm -hmm. uh, eaten in many of the restaurants. Not much of a difference. It's not a huge difference. They, they, I mean, they obviously have a, a little bit of a difference, but not not massively. Not a difference in price. A few, a few are more expensive. Mm, but not But huge, not yeah. like, it's not a massive. Yeah, I think, in other words, if you were to order something safe, and a nice glass of wine, you won't be put back too much. There's no nasty surprises. But there is a place where there, there's a lot of difference, and yeah. that is the bakeries. That's true. And that's going to be our next stop. Let's go. So something that I think is really interesting about this street is there's a number of uh, winning baguette shops. Mm -hmm. So we're standing out in front of one... Uh, it's uh, Alexine, it's called, and there's a big sign out the front that says fourth place in the competition for the best baguette in Paris 2016. Yeah, it's very much like on the window. This is their main source of sure. bragging. Even though it was three years ago. Yeah. Right? But the thing that I find really interesting is the further you go along the street, you see more and more of them have these signs because they're all really good bakeries up here. They're all great. But what's really hard is, like, for example, 100 meters down the street, there's one that came third in 2014. And then there's one that came second in 2019. And the thing, the <laughs> so which one him weighs the heaviest? <laughs> which is yeah, <laughs> which, is, which is the best baguette? It's impossible to know. I know. What you know? Yeah. What? It's not the baguette. It's a tradition. Tradition. There you go. <laughs> that is the truth. Forget the baguette. Although, interesting little side note: if there is that sign up the front, if you find the one that won the best baguette, uh, that means that they get to provide the bread for the president for the whole year. I didn't know that. Well, there you go. Oh, I Hang love around. it. Hang around me, sister, and you'll learn a few more things. All right, all right. But uh, we're kind of coming to the end of our dusk tour. Obviously, if you do the day tour, you'll be able to go into all the bakeries, go into all the cafes. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's a reason that we're doing this in the evening. is because there's a really cool treat at the end of the street that I think a lot of people don't know about. Do you know what I'm talking about? Oh, I, yes, I do. It's well, one of my absolute favorite spots. And that's where we're going to go now. Uh, I'll let you know when we get there, but it's a good reason for why you should watch the video. Because uh, there's no better place to be at sunset than a good view of the city, is there? So here we are. 
we're in the lobby of the Terrace Hotel, T E R R A S S, mm. and we're about to head up to the top. Have you been here before? I have. I have a few times. We, we, well, we have been here together. But do you remember how you found out about it? I actually found it. I uh, found out about it via Catherine Watts. Catherine yeah, Watts. Yeah, she tipped me off. She might well be listening.、Mm, I hope so. Hi. That woman has her finger on the pulse of all things Paris. She sure does. But let's get up there and look at one of the best views. Now we're not technically on Rue des Abbes anymore. No, I don't know what this little appendix street is called. It's called like Joseph Maistre or something like that.、Oh, okay. Irrelevant. It's essentially the carry on at the end of it.、It's An extra one minute of walking, and、yeah. it makes everything worthwhile when you see all of Paris lit up. And if we're quick, we'll see the Eiffel Tower sparkle. All right, go. So we've just walked through the lobby, and it's really crucial that if you're going to do this, and you're not going to have a drink, or you're not staying in the hotel, that you do it like you own the place. <laughs> if they ask you what you're doing, and, and you know you feel like you're getting in trouble, just say the Eiffel Tower sent you. Ooh, it won't make any difference、copy. to any of us. <laughs> but、uh, but I'll take the blame for you. But at least it's something to say. No, but but the, the drinks are a little、uh, expensive on the top as we step into the lift,、uh, all the way to the top floor. Yeah, I think. seven. Seven. The drinks are seventh heaven. The drinks are a little <laughs> bit expensive up there, but、uh, kind of worth it. A glass of wine is not too bad. No, up we go. <laughs> so we made it up. We made it up. The music's on.、Yeah. I guess that means it's time to party. All of Paris. It's beautiful. Out before us and kind of lighting up in the sort of twilight hour.、Mm-hmm. Uh, do you fancy a drink? Yeah, sure. Why not? Well, that's what we'll do. Thank、okay. you very much, to everybody, for listening. Thank you. And hang around after the after this music here for a little bit from French Today and a little bit of Reader Gmail. All right. Cheers. You have it, everybody. We cut it kind of short at the end because it was really loud up there. But just to paint a picture, you've got a sprawling, sprawling view of the whole city, looking over the Montmartre Cemetery, which is kind of lovely in its own right. It looks like you know when you're up in Central Park in New York. I've never been to the view over it, but I've seen the pictures. When you see over all those trees, and then you get the city out beyond it, that's what it looks like, kind of up from that terrace hotel. Go and check it out if you want to get a more a sort of more visual idea of it in the book club. That I do. I did an interview up there with Cara Black, the crime writer, and I had I think maybe six or seven people there with me, and we had a coffee. So it's open in the day too. Go and look at that video. It's in the Eiffel Tower Book Club. Speaking of the Eiffel Tower Book Club, the book for August is Paris to the Past by Ina Caro. I haven't started reading it, but I got my hands on it the other day from a secondhand bookshop in Paris, and everyone in the book club is already raving about it. Now that's free to join with. Uh, what have I done? I call it a suggested five dollars a month Patreon donation. So if you're thinking, "Hey, I value Oliver's work," then why not sign up on Patreon for it? Or if you just want to get it for free, go and do it for free. But all the walk shows I do, there's no option for free there. You've got to sign up, become a member, support the show. Now onto those emails that I got. So this one's from Kurt Zell. So first he mentions how he found the podcast. He's been here five times in the past decade. Not bad, Kurt. But this is the bit I really love. It says. In the recent segment about culture shock, I chuckled during the discussion about the French lack of concern about germs and their handling of baguettes. True story. I was once walking down the Rue du Sèvre in the sixth arrondissement, and I saw a very Parisian-looking man walking with his dog. The dog was trotting along with a baguette in his mouth. Based upon the nonchalance of both the man and the dog, I could only presume that it was their regular routine. Mind you, the baguette did have the customary piece of waxed paper around the midsection. Keep up the good work, Kurt. Ann Arbor, Michigan, USA. Ann Arbor. Ann Arbor. Ann Arbor. Ann Arbor.、Uh, <laughs> thanks for the email, Kurt. That is great. I love that. A dog with a baguette in his mouth.、Uh, he's referring, of course, to the episode with John Clark, the psychologist. I had in a recent episode, in fact, the very last episode, talking about how the French people don't seem to care that the, the edges of the baguette is flapping in the wind, and and John said he was quite all right with it. So, Kurt, that was quite a wonderful thing that you snapped,、um, or at least that you saw. I wonder if you snapped a picture, but it reminds me of one of the most Swedish things I ever saw. I used to live in Sweden in Stockholm, and once I was walking along a bridge, and there was a dog. Carrying the shopping in an H and M bag, and H and M, of course, is a Swedish brand as well. And it was a very Swedish-looking man with the dog as well. And I thought, look at this. I guess it's not that Swedish, but it was kind of funny to see him, to see the dog carrying the bag. But anyway, there you go.、Uh, dogs carrying baguettes. Whatever next. Well, I know what next. We got an email come in from 
a Patreon supporter, and that is my favorite kind of email. In fact, it's from Jeffrey, who said, until moments ago, I was a Patreon virgin. I'm not sure what pushed me over the edge. Was it your recent podcast with Jay Swanson where you both gave tips for what you should never do in Paris? After listening to that episode, I'm now so obsessed with your advice that I just said bonjour seven times to my Uber driver. Never mind that I'm still in Omaha, Nebraska and not leaving for Paris until the end of September. And he says, speaking of which, Omaha is where I draw newspaper cartoons. I'm only one of a handful of newspaper cartoonists left in the U.S., I'm also old school, still use pen and ink, so while I'm on a deadline, inking my drawings, literally spilling ink everywhere and ruining my clothes, I listen to the Earful Tower. Wow, that is a new one, Jeffrey. I love that a lot, and that is why I said it at the intro to this episode, maybe you're drawing cartoons. By the way, Jeffrey continues, heading to France this fall for my annual pilgrimage for a cartoon festival and exhibition in which I'll take part. Thank you for all you do and help me stay connected to a city and a country that I love. So that's Jeff, his last name, Koturba, Koturba, K-O-T-E-R-B-A, look him up, Jeffrey Koturba. Dot com. Find him on Instagram. He's a supporter of the show. That means I'm a supporter of his work. I checked out your cartoons, Jeffrey. They look really cool. Keep up the good work. And thank you for supporting this show on Patreon. You guys that do that are my favorite kind of listeners. Merci to you. Now, before we get on to French today, I want to read a review. I used to do this a lot, but I stopped because, kind of because I thought it was a bit too much of the old back scratching, giving the old scritch behind the ear. What's the point? You read nice words. Uh, it doesn't really make any difference, apparently. No one really knows. But uh, this this one touched my heart so much that I wanted to share it and say thank you. It's a, it's a five-star review from Ponzu22. It says, come for the tips, stay for the company. Oliver G is an Australian expat who loves Paris and doesn't care who knows. And you're right there, Ponzu. If you're planning a trip to Paris and you're looking for someone to set the stage for you, you quickly zero in on the Eiffel Tower podcast. You skim and catch up on past episodes where you find tips on what to do in Paris, what not to do, how to photograph Paris, how to do Versailles, right, how to speak French, and so much more. After you've done all of those, you realize that you're hooked on the host's voice, sense of humor, his curiosity, and gregariousness. Whoa, gregariousness. Does that mean I can put the word gregarious next to this podcast in inverted commas now? Uh, as well as the variety and quality of his guests, you also become aware of the growing ecosystem that has... At its center, Oliver's podcast and his personality. There's a book club, a Facebook page, Instagram, YouTube, Patreon supporter circle, Paris walking tours, and the many personal friends, local celebrities, and listeners whose names and contributions become familiar and integral after a while. Oliver's great at connecting with his audience, and the letters he reads on the show prove that the connection is two-way. You feel affinity not only with Oliver, but with his Paris and his circle of friends. This is social media at its best. Informative, entertaining, engaging, free to the content consumer, but with a viable business model for the creator. I have a feeling I'll be listening and engaging long after my Paris trip. Merci, Oliver. Bonne chance. Merci, Ponzu22, or should that be Ponzu22? It's really kind that you left a review like that. Some people do look at the reviews and then they'll uh, hopefully be encouraged to listen, but it's also nice. Uh, I've been doing this for a couple of years now to see someone who's summed it up so nicely for me. And, uh, I don't know, you, you warmed this old cold heart, like I sometimes say, and uh, made my day. So thank you very much, Ponzu, and thanks to all you guys who leave a review. What really is the most important to me, all you guys, is that you subscribe to the show. Help those numbers to grow. And that's enough for me. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I've already told you all the things you need to do. Go and do them, and uh, have a lovely week. Au revoir.